Well, just 10 home runs away now from setting the all time record for most home runs in a career. Bonds at 746. And we are on the road to history. And Barry Bonds, you could see it in his first at bat, you could see it in the second at bat. And it was his third AB that lit this crowd up and got everybody into this ball game, as he so often does when he clears the fences. 4 3. Rockies were in the top of the seventh here again Dwayne Kuiper. All right. Thanks Mike and Willie Tavares against Russ Ortiz and there's a fastball a bit high one ball and no strikes. So now Russ Ortiz want to try and put a quick zero up there to get his club back into the dugout. Top of the order. Well, one ball and one strike. Another, Another look, look at Bonds going out to the center. Part of this ballpark. He's back. Here's the 1 1 offering. Lifted into shallow right field. It's going to be Fred Lewis to make the catch. All right, for our Corona timeout, it's all about Russ Ortiz. California kid lives in Mesa. Pitch for the Sooners. The champion Sooners, I might add. He and his wife Stacy have two of the cutest girls you've ever seen. Here's Spillbores. And the pitch, and Spillbores pops it up, and that's out of play. Well, it seems like since Noah Lowry's got out of this ball game, every Rocky's gone up there and hacked at the first pitch. Yep. Spillmore's has scored a run. He drew a walk in the fifth. And a breaking ball for a strike. 0 2. Russ Ortiz seems to be throwing the ball pretty well. He is. I mean, he's throwing without pain. That's the one concern coming off the disabled list. He has had zero discomfort in his elbow. The problem that caused him to go on the disabled list. Got him. See ya. <laughs> Headed back to the dugout after the home run. He said, take it off yeah, my shoulder. Get that monkey off my back. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he, know, he knows his swing as we all do. But I mean, he's back, and in three at bats, he knows it. Here's Holiday. Very high to Holiday, who tripled in a pair of runs in the fifth inning. You know, and I don't care who you are, man. I mean, you get to a certain age when you have slumps, you start to think about it. You start to think, hmm, am I ever going to get back on track as it prolongs each day? And it really started when the Giants left San Francisco and went to Colorado. It was a long road trip for Bonds, and this road trip until today, he's, he's been very, very slow with the bat. There's a strike. One ball and one strike. And it was one pitch really in one location that was causing a problem. The pitch away, the sinker away. Well, 7.45 was on there for too long, at least in the eyes of Barry Bonds. Here's the 1 1 coming up to Holiday. Little pop up that Rich Aurelia says, I got it, and he does. Nice so hitting. Ortiz comes back six up six down and the Giants will come up and it'll be Vizquel Franson. It's 4 3 Colorado as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. These defining moments and highlights are brought to you by Fry's Electronics. It was the barbecue at the park day is Klesko and and Klein Freddie Lewis. Doubled in the first run for the Giants on a little flare to right field, but then Chris Ionetta decided that catchers can hit triples as he triples in to Lewitsky. Holiday triple to knock in a pair of runs as this one hit right into Triples Alley. 
And then of course Barry Bonds hit home run number seven four six off of Taylor Buckholz. And that put us at four three and that's where we stand is Omar Vizquel stands in to lead things off and Vizquel looks at a strike. It'll be Vizquel Franson and then Ortiz probably a pinch hitter. Lots of activity in the Rockies bullpen. Bang bang. O2. But Troy Hawkins the right hander and uh, Jeremy Affel the lefty. So I'd have to believe that Buckholes is probably on a one hitter leash. If anybody gets on, he'll probably be out of this game. Holiday will come in and make the catch. One out. And here's Franson. Well, with Bonds hit the home run, Giants down by three. I don't think we're going to see Clint Hurdle pitch him again. I mean, one thing about Clint Hurdle, he knows hitting. Been a hitting instructor long before he was a manager. And in watching the three at bats today, if Bonds has taken a guy like Clint Hurdle would know that he is back and he's swinging the bat well. Branson takes a strike. He singled in the third inning, hit a fly ball to center field in the fifth. Well, I agree with you. He's not going to let Bonds hurt him anymore in this game. This has popped up and it's out of play. Kevin Franson yesterday went to the ceremony at San Jose State as he graduated. Very nice. Mom and Dad, think they were proud? You bet. Here's the 0-2 to Franson. And that pop-up is going to take his bat, but he's going to stay alive. And uh, is that guy all right? Well, the, it hit the guy's hand, or the gal's hands, and it went right back and hit the guy right in the nose. Gamer, though, he hadn't even rubbed it, so... So Franson in a battle right now is Buckholtz making a lot of good 0 2 pitches. However, that was not one of them. One and two. Ortmeyer is on deck. It's the the section that is cheering the loudest for Kevin Franson. Here's the one two. Up the middle. On the backhand is Carroll and he will make the play. Ortmeyer pulled back. It's going to be Klesko. Let's go against Trevor Miller in that series against Houston. Kaboom. klesko has been hitting over 300 against lefties this year. That was a big potato. He did get everything into that one. So let's go batting for Russ Ortiz. And Buckholz starts him off with the first pitch breaking ball, and it's 0 and 1. Okay, the, the, the slant on that breaking ball is so severe. I mean, it's just a. I mean, the first time you see it, I mean, it buckles you. Let's go. Oh boy, he smoked Ionetta. Got a fastball, and he fouls it back. The backswing of Ryan Klesko absolutely waylaid Ionetta. Bang right on top of the gourd. Oop. And it stunned him. Wally Bell had to kind of prop him up there for a second. I mean, you're, it's a rough position. 
Oh, goodness. He just took a baseball bat and smoked you on top of the head with it. Okay. Get back in there and play, Mead. 0 oh 2. And Klesko out on three pitches. So Buckholtz a good seventh inning. Now we will head to the eighth. It stays 4 3, Colorado. Day, who earlier took us on the road to history with a home run to center field, home run number 12 on the year, number 746 in his Hall of Fame career to dead center. And that's our Toyota drive of the game. Why not? We've been waiting around for that for a while. In fact, he can hit a couple more Toyota drives of the game today, as far as we're concerned. Here's Kevin Correa as he's facing Todd Helton. And a strike, one ball and one strike. Kevin Correa, 3.88 ERA, or is that 8.6? 8 6. No, I think it's an 8. <laughs> I did. I had to get like two inches away from the monitor. That's not good. 1 and 2. Hey, he's had a good first half. Let's put it that way. Three eight six. Now we're cooking with gas. 19 strikeouts against nine walks. It's good stuff. Look out. But he still has that one pitch in him right there. Yeah, that's the one pitch where if you're a right handed hitter, look out. Two two pitch coming up to Helton. Look out, a souvenir. He swung at that ball. It looked like both feet were off the ground. All right, let's take a look at his feet. Kind of a funny rotation. Definitely stayed inside the ball. Down the left field line, Bonds will give chase, but that will curl into the seats. 4 3 Rockies. Yeah, we see smiles. That's good. Have six more outs in this game. I thought she was grabbing her head there for a second. Good to see everybody's okay. Seventh pitch coming up. And this at bat to Hilton. Down the left field line, and that's a fair ball. Bonds gets to it, and Helton will have a double. Ever since we put the Helton has no hits in the series graphic up, he's three for four. Let the ball get deep. I mean, there's a lot of similarities in just how late he allows that ball to get into him deep and how late he gets his swing to the ball and how good an opposite field hitter he is a lot of similarities to him and bonds in that regards so now it becomes stressful because Atkins is at the plate and Helton is in scoring position with nobody out and a strike and it's 0 and 1. Second, nobody out. Strikeout situation. Out of play down the right field line. It's 0 and 2. One and two. 
Good idea. Little slider off the plate away. It's change up that he's starting to feature now. It's become a real good strikeout pitch for him, too. Well, he had a shot to come inside. It's two balls and two strikes. So Correa, the fourth Giants pitcher this afternoon. Foul. He pulled it on the ground. Who? Thumbs up. George Ramirez had a chance to beat somebody on that one. That was like a regular ground ball. He had it played perfectly. I got it. I got it. Whoa. Right I between think, the wickets. I think it picked up speed on George. Two and two. Yeah, he'd have cut that 20 years ago. Out of play. Arizona is leading Houston three to one. Houston has lost eight in a row. San Diego is leading Milwaukee three to nothing. Milwaukee has lost four in a row. Do you see a pattern here? Pittsburgh beat Cincinnati 14 to 10. Cincinnati has lost six in a row. Atkins pulls it on the ground to Feliz who checks on Helton. Helton's going to be in a rundown. Is Feliz bluffed him and now he tags him out. That's a huge mistake from Helton. He was getting greedy. And you really have to give a tip of the cap to Feliz to let Helton hang himself. He had the time at third base. He looks and then all of a sudden a fake with the arm throw and Pedro, he set him up. And that is a big play because it takes a runner out of scoring position and it sets up the force for Correa that throws who throws lots of ground balls. Just a running mistake. And he wanted to get the third base and set up a runner at third less than two out. Couldn't get it done. Chopper. Feliz doesn't catch it, but Vizquel does. And that's a fielder's choice. So Tulowitzki is retired. And here's Ionetta. Well, as a third baseman, you have to try and get everything you can get. And once it get past you, the shortstop right there. And that had to be a quick exchange. How quick was Vizquel to take the ball out of his glove and get off the throw. Well, did he even touch the glove? I believe he did. I think he used it like a ping pong paddle as he just slapped it into his throwing hand. Whoop. And Correa threw a changeup nearly over the head of Richard Rillia. What he does getting the ball into his throwing hand is, is remarkable. High hop. That did not stay in the leather long. A bit high, one ball and no strike. For the Giants in the eighth inning, it'll be the top of the batting order, Win, Lewis, and Aurelia. And it will be most likely against someone from that Rockies bullpen. And look out, Ionetta. It is dangerous at home plate for you, young man. One ball and one strike. Remember, Klesko banged him on top of the helmet on the final out in the end of the seventh inning. One ball and one strike. Out of play. This was really a good thump right Watch here. Watch the helmet of the catcher. Bang. Wow. And that stunned him. Wow. 
a box been called. I don't think Korea knows what he did. Well, that becomes a big play because the Giants you now have a see what he starts and stops. Yep, the right knee buckles. You can't do that. Any start and stop is a buck. Outside and low. You're talking about the National League Central and some of the streaks that are going on. The National League West against the National League Central coming into the day 39 and 19. Down low, 3 and 2. National League Central has hit on hard times. And the West is taking advantage of it. Roger Craig used to say that the biggest game was the game after a loss. Because he feared losing streaks, as all managers do. Outside of the walker. Tell you, that, that has got a pretty good eye. He could take that pitch in a 3 2. A little slider just off the plate. Close. But definitely called correctly. I think it was a ball. Just that, you know, when you think a guy in a two strike, he's supposed to expand his, his zone a little bit. You would think. But not a bad pitch with an open first base either. Here's Jamie Carroll. And he pops one high and foul. And Fred Lewis will watch this one sail into the seats. No balls in one strike. Carroll lined out to Fred Lewis to pick up the second out of the sixth inning. The 0 1. Out of play, nothing in two. Stay tuned after the game for the Toyota post game wrap. All right, right above the fusion side, he drops the ball and he is bummed out. And what would your advice be, Mike? Bring your glove, meet. You had that play. How can you come to the show without your glove? Let's go. We got a bunch of players here, pal, and you ain't one of them. Oh, and two. Aurelia's got it, and that ends the inning. So the leadoff double does not hurt. Top of the order coming up. Well, join us Tuesday as the Giants travel to the Big Apple for another look at speedster Jose Reyes and the red hot New York Mets. Giants rookie phenom Tim Lincecum starts game one of the series. You'll see it right here on FSN Bay Area. Giants Mets Tuesday, 4 o'clock Pacific time. And you'll see it only on FSN Bay Area. First of 10 on the road for the Giants. Here's Manny Corpus. He replaces Buck Holtz and he's facing Randy Wynn. And Randy Wynn shoots one to the backstop foul. Corpus is another guy who's got big sink, big slide. Slider breaking ball, sinker fastball, and he, he throws lots of ground balls, but he's also got the ability to strike you out. You see the strikeout walk ratio and for a sinker ball or a two to one is big. And he's almost got a strikeout an inning. That's even bigger. There's the slider.
Oh and two to Randy Wynn. And it hit him. And it's easy for me to say but the Giants will take that. It, it, it is a break. I mean you're in an 0-2 hole to a guy who's got great stuff and he puts you on base for free. But it's not an easy way to get on especially if you're a guy with speed man they hate to get hit on the legs. Well remember Randy Wynn fouled the ball off his knee last year. And I don't think that was in the same spot. And he was not right after that. The whole year he was hitting around an injury. So now it's Fred Lewis. See if Bruce Bochy will have Fred Lewis lay down a bunt. Low and in, one ball and no strikes. Aurelia to follow. Half felled in the bullpen. He's thinking about one guy. Another nice backhanded play by Ionetta. Two balls in those strikes. Half out the left. He's down there thinking about that guy right there. See the numbers bonds against Affel, but you know what? Today may be a different story. Mm -hmm. Foul. Two balls in one strike as Corpus came in with a strike. Talked about the key for Bonds is letting the ball get to him. And look, his arms and his hip, I mean, there's no reach there. That's just pure power off the back leg, and he takes on the center field fence. That was his home run swing back in the sixth inning when he had a two, two run shot with one out. Out of play is Bochi. Let Lewis take a hack. It's two and two. Here comes the Freddie Lewis. Chopper near the bag to Lewitsky, the flip. Not in time. Wow, I cannot believe they even made that close. To Lewitsky again coming up big with range. Now they had him cheated him over towards second base because of the double play depth. What a beautiful flip to Carroll, who very quickly unloads the ball over to help them. Spite Freddie Lewis's speed, they almost pull it off. It's bang bang. Wow. Aurelia is one for three. Tula Whiskey and Jamie Carroll showing you why the Colorado Rockies are on top of the National League in defense this year. And Aurelia trying to bunt his way on, bunted it foul. No balls in one strike. That's the one thing you can do, but you can only do it once in an at bat. You can do the sneak attack bunt. You know, one of my favorite at bats of all times is when a guy fakes a bunt and doesn't get it down, or even tries to sacrifice and doesn't get it down, That's and then right. he hits a home run. I love that at bat. No balls in one strike. Down the left field line, but Aurelia got out in front. It's nothing in two. Brad Hennessy on the play. Played that rebound perfectly. That one sting a little bit. Oh and two. Hey. 
Got him. Here's Bonds. Hurdle just checking with Bob Apodak and the pitching coach as to whether or not Affel was ready to go. Now he's talking it over with his bench coach, Jamie Quirk. And the decision is do you want to take Corpus out of the game? And indeed, they will. So when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune-up, your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Stargame.com and by Comcast. So Barry Bonds is going to hit. He's going to face Jeremy Affelt. Lefty against lefty. Well, Jeremy Affelt's got some quality stuff. And Bonds has not figured him out yet. We go 90 to 95 with the fastball, and I mean a wicked curveball. And Affeld has not given up a home run yet this year in 20 and two thirds innings. Breaking ball, one ball and no strikes. Lewis can fly, he's at first. Bond said, no way, one ball and one strike. Yeah, I agree with him, I think that was wide. I know one thing, Ionetta knows if he's going to get that one, he's going back out there again. That was a hanger. Two balls in one strike, and maybe a make good. That was a better pitch than the one before. That is a risky pitch to throw because of where Spillbors is playing. He's playing way into right center field. A ball down the line, Lewis could score. Two balls in one strike. Out of play down the left field line. It's two and two. It's one. Balance is back. And that upper body just sort of stays. And just rotates around a center point with no forward slide. You know he's dialed. Here's the 2 2. Ooh, 3 and 2. I do not know how he got out of the way. I just think it scraped Giants off his chest. I don't think Barry Bonds knows how he got out of the way. Are you betting on a hook? I think so. I think so too. Although he hung the last one. I'm not sure if Ionetta is going to go there. He may go fastball away and try and get the call. Three and two. Curveball. He walked him. And here comes Clint Hurdle. Benji Molina is going to be the hitter when it's time for a change. Think speedy. Oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Rockies hanging on to a one run lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And if you're looking at the numbers for the former giant Latroy Hawkins. Pitched a scoreless inning on Tuesday in Arizona. And that was the first appearance since April 20th. He was on the DL with some inflammation in his right elbow. So he throws hard. And uh, very, very impressive numbers in this situation. 
Well, you're right. The Troy Hawkins does throw hard. He'll go 94, 98 miles an hour with a fastball, a little slider, and a curveball. One ball and no strikes. And you're also right about Molina, who has thrived in this situation. Lewis at second, Bonds at first. Fair ball. This game is tied. Bonds digging to third. He's done it again. Every year, Benji Molina. They gave him the line, and he took advantage of it. Inside out, it's a fastball on the outside corner. You can see where Helton is, and the ball shoots right past him, and an easy score for Freddie Lewis. And the reaction, yep. It's Man. another day. What else is new? At the office. And here's Feliz, who now can give the Giants the lead. With Bonds at third. And a strike. And now Feliz does not mind the high the high velocity fastball at all. Bonds at third, Molina at first. Breaks his bat on the ground to Tulowitzki. And that ends the inning. Giants tie it up. We'll go to the ninth. It's four to four. Well, visit FSNBarea.com and vote for the All-Star Teacher. Check out the finalists, their bios, and the video features. The winning All-Star Teacher receives $10,000 for his or her school. And uh, this is sponsored by Major League Baseball, KMBR, and the San Francisco Chronicle. So check it out. So Correa, he comes back out. And Steve Finley is going to lead things off. So Finley will face Kevin Correa. And the pitch and a fastball for a strike. Well, you saw the numbers for Finley on the season, and then you saw what the numbers of what he's done against the Giants, and it just seems like he has always done well against the Giants, regardless of what uniform he's had on. He's got 16 hits this year, and six of them against the Giants. I just don't think that's very nice. One ball and one strike. Out of play, one and two. Tavares to follow, and then Spillbores. We are in the ninth. Guide into straightaway center field. Randy Wynn has got a beat on it. And Finley's retired. Tennessee Jack Tashner getting greased up. And Brian Fuentes and Ramon Ramirez polishing off their warm up pitches. Tavares is one for three. And the first pitch strike. No balls and one strike. Tavares with 19 infield singles, and that leads the major leagues. Base hit. 
Speed on the bases for the Rockies with Spillboards coming up. Well, it's definitely a steal situation here for Tavares. We always talk about the true definition of a base dealer is when he can steal a base in a scenario where everybody knows he's going to try and go. And this is one of those times. So for Kevin Correa's perspective, I mean, he's got to do everything within his power to make sure Tavares is stopped and make sure he gets unloaded quickly to the plate. Bill Bors takes a call strike. No balls in one strike. You know, and these are one of the situations that I think it takes time for guys coming out of the minor leagues to, to master, being able to control the pace. Double plays. Rockies have grounded into the most in the National League, and that is driven into center field for Randy Wynn. And here's Holiday. Holiday one for three, a triple walk, couple RBIs, scored a run, kind of a typical day for him. 39 RBIs on the year. I hope he's not making plans for July 10th. Probably going to get another trip back here to San Francisco. Well, Tavares. If he doesn't go here, something's wrong. I'm not talking about maybe this pitch, but certainly in this at bat. I agree. He's extended out his lead. Molina's looking into the dugout. He may be looking for a pitch out. Down low, one ball and no strikes. I mean, I know he's been throwing out eight times, but you cannot let that fear of of not getting there affect you in a steel situation like now. Correa really slowing things down. Still, a strike. still no move and I really can't believe it but you know they were just assuming that he's healthy. We don't know. I mean he may not be. And also I, I, you know it may be just that Clint Hurdle feels that he's in scoring position at first base with with Holiday out. I mean, I don't know. But you would think with a guy with his speed, this situation, when you want to put a runner in scoring position, he would be going. He's kind of inching over there towards second, and Correa threw over there, and Tavares got back easily. He does not go, and that's inside. Two balls in one strike. Is that a wrist guard that Tavares puts on his hand? A lot of guys are doing that now. They'll give that piece of equipment to their first base coach when they get on base, put it on to protect themselves. It's the same type of piece that rollerbladers have when they wear wrist guards. Two and one. Now Tavares goes, swinging a bouncing ball to Vizquel. He has it. He will take his time, and that ends the inning. For the Giants, Omar Vizquel will lead things off. Four to four, you're looking at the Giants' leadoff hitter here in the ninth, and that's Omar Vizquel. A couple of guys that uh, put the ball in play, run a little bit, Vizquel, Franson. And then we'll see after that. Here's Ramon Ramirez, who comes in to do the pitching. See the numbers on Ramirez, an inflated ERA, a sinker slider split guy. He can strike you out, but he will give you something to hit. He will make location mistakes, and it's just a matter of a hitter being patient until he gets one of those mistake to location pitches to swing at. Vizquel is 0 for 3. 
Down low, one ball and no strikes. Another one of these bullpen guys for the Rockies that comes out and throws hard. Pulled foul as it skips on into the seats. Get that ball down and into the scale, and that feeds his power. Uh -huh. The Rockies outfield is playing the scale to hit the ball to left field, and they are totally giving him the right field line. It's a pitch him away, play him away defense. And a little flare, and there's a hit. Keep the ball down low to Omar Vizquel. He's going to do something with it. Just a nice controlled swing to just go back up the middle, let the pitcher supply the power. I mean, it's almost like playing Pepper. Kevin Franson, he will be asked to bunt, I think. And he bunts it foul. And uh, when you bunt that ball, you're just hoping and praying that that ball is going to get out of play. You're absolutely right. And uh, that's sort of a reprieve when it goes foul. Sinker ballers are normally guys that are pretty easy to bunt. And that time Franson took it one ball and one strike. And a lot of guys that have that in their repertoire where they can bunt for a base hit at times they they're not the best of sacrifice bunters because they show too late. You're going to bunt man get it out there. And a beauty. And Viscal with a wide turn, and he forces Carroll to throw the ball. And uh, they're very pleased. Well, that's the big leagues right there. It's good situational baseball. And the point you made about Viscal taking a hard turn around second base, he knew that there's no middle infielder in the vicinity, so he could go. And make a large turn, and if you force a throw from a, a guy covered first, in this case Jamie Carroll, you may get lucky. He may throw it away. You never know. Perfect bunt from Franson. Now watch the top of your screen with Vizquel coming right around. He knows where the second baseman is. He's not anywhere to the bag, and the shortstop's in front of him. And a big turn got that throw. Here's Ortmeier. Bring it in the outfield. Low to Ortmeier. One ball and no strikes. And you've got good arms in the outfield. It's one thing it, about Colorado. Their outfield, outfield arms are outstanding. And especially the ones in left and center. And a strike. One ball and one strike. Ordmeyer is a pinch hitter is 0 for 3. But overall 9 for 24. Pretty nasty 1 0 split. But the good thing is he showed it to him early in the count. But the guy who's got movement on his fastball running away from Ortmeyer, he's very capable of throwing that thing to left field. Foul back 1 and 2. Tough job for any player. A tougher job for young players. And we're talking about pinch hitting. That is the potential winning run at second base. Orton Meyer behind in the count. One ball and two strikes. A double look to second and the pitch and Ortmeier out on strikes. That is nasty stuff. Seven, two, 
Talk about a split that just bottoms out. Has Ortmeier out front. And really, that pitch right there is what makes Ramirez interesting because he's got that type of strikeout stuff. Yet you look at his numbers and you see somebody's been hitting this guy, and you know then that he's been making some location mistakes. And what you hope for is he makes one right here. Here's Randy Wynn. He's one for three lifetime against Ramirez. Very high one and oh and Randy Wynn who's been red hot with the bat is 0 for three in the eighth inning he was. Struck on the leg by a pitch. And it had everything to do with the Giants scoring the tying run. Here's the 1 0 to Randy Wynn and a swing and a foul off the backstop. One ball and one strike. Good speed at second in Omar Vizquel. One ball and one strike. Down low. Pretty shallow in right field is Bill Bors. The same can be said for the center fielder Tavares. Well they know Ramirez is stuff and a lot of it is excluding the slider which breaks into the left handed hitter. I mean his split and his fastball which. I think that's all you're going to see against when I mean everything runs away from that lefty. So if they're hit it they're likely to hit it to left center or left. Here's the 2 1. Out of play, 2 and 2. Ionetta out to talk to Ramirez. Probably saying, you know, that split that you threw to Ortmeier? Throw it here. Would be a bad call. What you hope for is that he hangs it. Two and he, two. He hangs it up. Randy Whittle hit it. Here it comes. High to right field. A long run for Spillboards. Spillboards will make the catch down the line, and that ends the inning, and we are going to play extras. It's four to four. Weekend, so book your Giants vacation package today. Visit sfgiants.com backslash Giants vacations or call 1 800 670 0858. Steve Klein is the new pitcher. Klein is in for one specific reason, and that's to go after Todd Helton. Klein, a fastball slider. Throw a curveball and a changeup, but he really can create a few things out there. Not afraid to try them, but basically you're going to see the fastball slider combination. Helton, just place him at first. That's his fourth hit, and Bruce Bochy's coming out. So it appears we will have a new pitcher when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. Four to four here in the 10th. And Brad Hennessy will be facing Garrett Atkins with Kaz Matsui at first base. And you see what Hennessy has done this year. Well, he's been outstanding. And he will face Atkins. And, you know, I, I never would have said this last year, but this year I would say it. it opportunity for Clint Hurdle to put down a bunt. With Atkins struggling this year. And a fastball strike, and it's 0 1. Think again. For the first time today, it looks like the sun may be coming out. It's been trying. A cool Northern California day. 
Matsui with pretty good speed. Aurelia holding him tight. And Hennessy will throw on to first. Is Helton. Let off the tenth with a base hit. Three singles in this game for Helton and a double. Out of play. Down the right field line off the auxiliary scoreboard. It's 0 and 2. Not very good numbers against Hennessy. A lot of ground balls, and right now Hennessy would take one of those right at Omar Vizquel. As a of fact. He would. Out of play again. Well, that would hit all three levels. So everybody's ticked off above. You all right, Dad? I think so. Oh, and two to Atkins. Dad was taking inventory. See the first thing he checked? His wallet. And Hennessy again tosses to first. If Dad's got his wallet and his keys, life goes on as normal. Not a problem. Be a, a tough decision to make if you could only pick one. Right. That's, that is a tough decision. Oh, and two. And that squirts away from Molina. And down to second goes Matsui. Now they're setting up on the inside corner and he throws this thing down and away. And Benji Molina. I mean, there was no attempt with a body slot. It was just simply how far he could reach backhanded to get to the ball. And apparently not far enough. Pass ball. So they gave him a pass ball. And that's what the official scores. So. That's a bad call. It's not a pass ball. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Matsui at second. Nobody out. Atkins at the plate. I mean, it's a strikeout situation here. Now it's three and two. And as Hennessy snaps at the ball as he gets it back from Molina. And Molina senses something, so he goes out to talk to Hennessy. Well, the one thing that you have to remember that Hennessy can throw some ground balls. And I think this is going to be the message that Molina gives him. Do not be afraid to put the force in order. You pitch for the strikeout here, stay to a corner, make your nastiest slider or your nastiest split or curveball, whatever it is you want to throw, but make it nasty. If he goes after it, if he goes after your pitch and swings and misses, great. You get the strikeout with the runner at second. If you miss and he walks, so what? You set up a a force and a ground ball can get you two outs. Three and two. Fouled off of Wally Bell. Wally Bell took it right in the kisser. Watch the umpire's mask. Pow. Wally Bell shaking it off. It's three and two. He's old school. I mean, he doesn't even have a helmet behind his mask. Out of play. Hennessy going right at him. Go, 
Yep, smiles around. Everybody's okay. The girls are having fun. Three Look balls and two strikes. <laughs> Struck well to center field. Randy Wynn is going to run it down. And Matsui did not tag up. What a play by Randy Wynn. Oh, the Giants catch a huge break when Masui became a spectator. Once he saw the numbers on Randy Wynn's back, it was as his cue to get back to the bag, and he froze. And what could have been an easy take a third and a third out, runner at third less than two out situation, now he stays at second. That's the mistake right there. He should have gone the other way. Nice play by Randy Wynn, and here's Tulowitzki. Atkins crushed it. Tulowitzki is one for four. And uh, Hennessy does a smart thing. Viskel and Franson are both playing quite a ways away from Matsui. And now Franson starts to move a little closer. And a strike, and it's 0 1. Haven't seen that real hard biting slider today from Hennessy. A good strikeout slider. See if he throws it here. Out of play, 0 and 2. He did not. Definitely have it set up, but Tulowitzki is a guy that if, if you're going to go out the plate away, you got to get way off the way because he's got pretty good ability to extend out beyond the strike zone on the outside corner. One and two. Last slider away. I mean, you could come back and you could try and, and backdoor a sinker. Although I think right now they're better set up to the inside corner. Tomahawk that one. It stays one and two. Or you could just throw it across the letters. Not sure if that was the intended location, but something they're finding out about Kulowitzki is that he will chase. And if that's the case, keep climbing the ladder. One and two. Should be another souvenir. I think Benji Molina is going to ask him a little bit about what were you thinking on that last location? Because he really had way too much of the strike zone. Let's see where this thing goes up. I mean, for Tulowitzki, who likes, it, I think, the ball middle away, that's right to his wheelhouse. He kind of got away with one there. So very quickly, the veteran catcher wants to go out there and have an explanation. One ball and two strikes. That was there. That was strike three, and that's been set up for a couple of pitches. He made the pitch and did not get the call, and Bruce Bochy wants to know what the deal is. He's reacting solely on the way that this ball was caught by Molina. I mean, that is right in the inside corner, right between the knees. 
And watch Molina hang on to the target. He knows that should have been called strike three. And they don't get it. Well, now it's up to Hennessy to try to forget about that. Because you can let that linger. Well, he'd go right back in there again, I think. With Wally Bell, you might get him to call it. I mean, that's that's something he will do. You know, no guarantee if he calls it once, he'll call it a second time, or vice versa. Out of play. He's ready. Two balls and two strikes. Again away, again a foul. And again, the inside corner is set up. And really, it's the same situation they had with Atkins. You stay to a corner. You don't challenge out over the middle of the strike zone. Not with an open base here. Not with a guy that can throw a ground ball. And Hennessy's getting a workout today. To be the ninth pitch coming up. Lewis will back off. Here's his throw home. Not even close. The second goes to Lewitsky. That's an RBI single and it's five to four. You know, if you're Brad Hennessy, you just want to scream at Wally Bell. You know, that ought to be in your ERA meet. They kept feeding that outside corner and Tulowitzki uh, goes right with the location. And on the 10th pitch of a, of a good battle, Tulowitzki wins. Here's Ionetta. Ionetta lines it to right, and Lewis is going to let this one play off of his glove. Tulowitzki is going to come in to score, and it's now six to four. It'll be a double for Ionetta. And Hennessy looked like he had pretty good stuff. Gives up a double to Ionetta. Some good opposite field heading from Ionetta, who is very strong that way. And that ball just sailed on Freddie Lewis. Well, they've given Freddie Lewis an error. That's a rough air. Now it's been changed back to a double. Well, I guess the right call. But what cost Freddie Lewis was the first step in. He misjudged the ball off the bat, and his first step came in, and he could not recover. And I think they were getting a little steamed about the pitch that wasn't called. Going out there to try and calm his pitcher down. Ionetta's had a couple of extra base hits in this game, a triple in the fourth, a double here in the tenth. There's the pitch that was in question. It was right there on the inside corner that they did not get and that would have changed everything. Two balls and no strikes. Swing and a miss. Two and one.
be Lewis Aurelia and Bonds will hit in the bottom of the tenth. There's a strike. It's two and two. I think one of the hardest things in baseball is for a relief pitcher that you know gives up a couple runs that break a tie in an extreme ball game. I mean, you, you have to be able to fight past the base hit and get the next guy out, minimize the damage. I mean, all these guys are competitive, and every one of them. Attaches himself to the game, to the outing, to the effort. And when it goes against you, I mean, you got to you got to regroup. It's not easy. Foul back. Three and two to Jamie Carroll. Another foul out of play. This has been a very long inning for Brad Hennessy. A lot of foul balls. Just the kill pitch, that good hard slider just has not been there for him today. Lifted to left where Bonds will track it down. Two outs. And here's Brad Hopp. Hopp, two eighty five, five homers and twenty seven RBIs on the years. Had a Pretty good series, couple RBIs, double hitting two for six. It's a quality hitter. High, one ball and no strikes. Two here in the tenth. After the Giants had tied it up in the eighth. Two and oh. Strike. Maybe it didn't have to be strike. Two balls in one strike. Flipping a coin back there. Show that pitch compared to the one that wasn't called a strike. Foul back. It's two and two. Tennessee rubs up the baseball. Giants trying to keep it at a two run deficit. Fuentes getting loose in the bullpen. Three and two. Next pitch for Brad Hennessy, number 33. That is a lot of throws for a reliever. Tavares to follow should Hennessy walk. Hop. And that's what he does.
And here's Tavares. Tavares one for or check that two for five. Sellout crowd today, 41,708. Out of play on the first pitch, nothing in one. Day off tomorrow, the Giants will head to New York City. They will start a three game series on Tuesday night at Shea Stadium. Then a four game series in Philadelphia. There's a strike. And then a three game series in Arizona. Ten game road trip. Yeah, well, you knew this was going to be kind of a short homestand between a couple of 10 gamers. Seems like the Giants just got back here to AT&T. And it started out so well, they won the first three games on this homestand. And right now, they are going to have to work some magic in extra innings to get one out of this three game series. 0 and 2. Out in front of the plate, Molina's going to have to hurry. Got him. And that'll do it. 6 4 Colorado. Giants trail by a pair here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Brian Fuentes coming in for the 25th time. 14 out of 15 times he has saved games when given the opportunity. And you will see a low three quarter sling with a fastball that in the eye of the hitter, if he throws it up above the belt, looks like it rises in and then a big sweepy breaky ball. He is a quality arm, folks. Kaz Matsui stays in the game and he'll play second base. Garrett Atkins, who was at third base, comes over to first base. And Jamie Carroll, who was at second base, goes over to third. And Brian Fuentes tries to nail it down for the Rockies. And he'll face Freddie Lewis. Freddie Lewis takes a pitch outside for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Lewis has been on base twice, once on a double, and once on a fielder's choice. Looked like the same pitch, one ball and one strike. Well, I think there's a few fans that are, are seeing it the same way you saw it. Well, you either call them both a strike or both a ball. That's all we care about. Two balls and one strike. Are really on deck. <laughs> well, it's unbelievable. You know, in, in, in Houston, Wally Bell had a rough night and he left the game because he was ill. And today he's having a rough day, and as far as we know, he feels pretty good. Lewis pops it up. It's going to be Tulowitzki making the catch. One out. But umpire strike zones, good or bad, are part of the game, I guess. It doesn't make it any easier to digest. Not if you're Brad Hennessy, not when you made a pitch, not when you had a guy struck out, not when you didn't get it. Aurelia one for four. No balls in one strike. Really trying to get on for Bonds. Foul. 
A loud foul down the left field line. Fuentes in the 0 2 pitch, and it's in the dirt one and two. Nice take. Go up the bat a little bit, get short, think back up the middle. He got him. Hans homered off of Fuentes last September. And he's number 732. Well, Bonds right now needs to get on for Benji Molina. Die hard. Don't be the last out. Keep things going for the next guy. That's what you say to yourself when you step into a batter's box in these situations. Overshift is on with Bonds at the plate. Very deep in the outfield. Out of play down the third. Baseline, it's two balls and one strike. Three and one. Benji Molina waiting on deck. The 3 1 pitch. Bonds fouls it back. It's 3 and 2. He knew he was going to get a fastball. Right on it. He knew he was going to get a fastball. He's likely to get another one here. 3 and 2. Breaking ball. And the walk. And he lost it. Benji Molina in the eighth inning came up big as he has done all year long. A opposite field base hit that scored Fred Lewis and tied the score at four. And he's being asked to do it again. Out of play. Molina looks like he's stretching it out a little bit. Oh and one off the end of the bat foul now it's nothing in two Bonds at first. The 0 2 pitch to Molina. Lifts it into left field. Holiday comes in, and that's the ball game. So after a three game sweep of the Houston Astros, and things were looking good on this homestand, the Rockies come into town. 
And they have now won five in a row as they take.